Welcome to the supporting parents and caregivers of students with high needs during the COVID-19 pandemic resource guide and webinar series. My name is Alicia Tragus. I am an education consultant in the Bureau of Special Education at the Connecticut State Department of Education. I am happy to be presenting today with my colleagues, Elizabetta Carrero from Cooperative Educational Services and Roxanne Crane from Oak Hill. This resource was developed through a collaborative partnership between the Connecticut State Department of Education, the Resc Alliance, the Connecticut Parent Advocacy Center, and the Connecticut Association for Private Special Education Facilities, overseen by the representatives shown on your screen, and was designed specifically for parents and caregivers of students with high needs to support your efforts to engage your child or young adult in continued educational opportunities during the COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize that some students have significant challenges accessing distance learning through more conventional methods. There are students who are unable to sit in front of a computer screen to access learning. And some students require a hands-on life skill embedded method of instruction. This resource guide was designed with that population of students in mind. The information and resources included in this resource guide are meant to be a supplemental resource for families. In addition to the work you are coordinating with your student's school program and are organized into 10 different topical categories. Getting started, communication skills, literacy, math, science, social studies, and current events, physical activity and mobility, life skills and self-help skills, art, sensory activities, and play and leisure. The one pager provides a one page overview of the complete resource guide. You will find the purpose of the resource, a brief overview of the information, tools, and resources located in each section of the resource, as well as a link to each section in the resource. Getting started is an introduction to the resource guide. This section is a great place for parents and caregivers to start as you navigate supporting your student. Supporting continued educational opportunities for students during the COVID-19 pandemic is a challenge for any parent or caregiver. However, it is of particular challenge for students who have high needs. Communication with school-based teams, the creation of schedules and routines, and setting of expectations are of utmost importance. Getting started is made up of three main sections. Some functional tips, self-care for the parent or caregiver, and setting up the environment for continued educational opportunities at home. Each of these main sections contains tips and suggestions on how to put the information presented into practice, as well as some additional resources that may be helpful. Now, my colleagues, Elisabetta and Roxanne, will introduce themselves to you and provide you with an overview of today's session. Hello, my name is Elisabetta Carraro. I have been a certified art teacher for seven years, working for Cooperative Educational Services in Trumbull, Connecticut. I have been working with students who present with a wide range of social, physical, behavioral, and emotional disabilities teaching art. Hello, my name is Roxanne Crane. I am a registered art therapist and licensed professional counselor with 15 years of experience working with children and adults with disabilities. For the last nine years, I have worked at Oak Hill School providing art therapy to students with intellectual, physical, and emotional disabilities throughout Connecticut. The goal of our session today is to provide you with an overview of the art section in the resource guide, which can be easily accessed by using the web address on your screen. The art section of the resource guide includes information and resources in three areas, art supports, 
which speaks to the importance of art experiences for children of all ability levels, putting art supports into practice, which includes tips and suggestions for ways to use art to support your child at home, and additional resources, which contains links to additional information and resources that may be helpful to assist families in engaging their child or young adult in meaningful art activities at home. Art supports speak to the importance of art experiences for all children, as art encompasses all of the developmental domains in child development. During times of stress and change, children of all abilities and in all stages of development may need additional support for their emotional needs. Art making provides intellectual stimulation, soothing sensory experiences, and much needed fun. You can really bring out the therapeutic qualities of art, of art making by focusing on the process and encouraging children to enjoy the experience of experimenting. Putting art supports into practice provides tips and suggestions for two important components in art making, how to introduce materials and how to experiment with them. When introducing art making materials to your child, begin with the five senses. Some children might have sensory sensitivities and may not like the feeling or smell of certain materials. Introducing children to a few mediums initially will help to get an idea of what materials they most like to work with and what materials to avoid. Once your child has a feeling of the art making materials and how to, safe, how to safely use them, they can begin to experiment with simple coloring and painting with hands or paintbrush. There are many examples provided for art making substitutes. If there is no access to paint or a paintbrush in your home, for instance, some paintbrush substitutes include Q-tips, sponges, cloth, cardboards, and fingers. Additionally, coffee or tea can be used for paint and different foods can be used to create color and pigment. Using items you might have around your house can be fun and may increase engagement. In addition to providing tips and suggestions, on how to introduce materials and how to experiment with them, putting art supports into practice offers suggestions for ways to make adaptive art tools for children with physical challenges and various ability levels. For example, if your child has difficulty holding a brush independently, you can use a milk jug to create a handle for holding brushes or markers. Take time for your child to feel the art materials and interact with them as much as possible. If your child needs hand over hand assistance or needs adult help to make a picture, make sure they can see it and talk to them about it. It is also important to have your child ask or point to what they want, such as materials, colors, shapes, etc. This will help improve communication and engagement. Additional resources includes a link to Oak Hill Art Studio, free YouTube videos hosted by Oak Hill School with art instruction for children with special needs several links to websites offering a variety of at-home art project ideas, a link to a website providing a compilation of art supports for students with special needs, a link to a website providing adapted art ideas using household items, and a list of supplies to help you get started at home, as well as suggested places to find these supplies at a low cost. Markers, paper, watercolor paints, and paintbrushes are great materials for starting an art supply kit. Clay and Play-Doh are excellent for all children, but especially for those with sensory needs. Thank you, Elisabetta and Roxanne, for partnering with me today to showcase the art section of the supporting parents and caregivers of students with high needs during the COVID-19 pandemic resource guide. It has been an honor to be a part of this collaborative project between the Connecticut State Department of Education, the Rusk Alliance, the Connecticut Parent Advocacy Center, and the Connecticut Association of Private Special Education Facilities in their efforts to provide guidance, resources, and supports for families and educators as we navigate a situation that we have never experienced before in our lifetime. 
We sincerely thank the members within our organizations shown on the screen for their contributions to this resource. As the remaining sections of this resource guide become finalized, you will be hearing from other members within our organizations who contributed to the content of those sections. To provide you with a brief explanation of the information and resources contained in each section as you support your student with high needs. Thank you for your time and attention. We wish you and your family health and happiness during this trying time. Be safe and remember, we will get through this challenging time together. <laughs>